Hi, my name is Jay Sable and I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 nonprofit organization. The purpose of our organization is to give people what they want as a path to changing the world. Ultimately, we see this as leading to a self-replicating model of teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities to be built around the world, teaching people how to implement our open source and free shared blueprints for food infrastructure, housing infrastructure, energy infrastructure, open source and free shared education, for-profit and non-profit highest good business models, as well as highest good society model, including self-governance models, resource-based economy application, as well as fulfilled living, and uh, highest good uh, earth stewardship practices. This is our weekly update number 42. And what I'm going to cover is all the details of everything that we've accomplished in the last week. There's always a written blog that goes along with this, so if you'd like to see the pictures, if you'd like to see the images, if you're somebody that would like to cruise around with the visual representations instead of just watching me, please click on the written blog. That will have links to all of this information, all of the open source content on our website, so you can see all the details of everything as it continues to develop, have access to all those details. So also, this is only our update for the last week, so what I'm going to talk about is what we've accomplished specifically for the week of December 9th, 2013 in a bullet point format and then I'll come back around I'll talk about the details and what's developing behind the scenes and what the plan is for the next few weeks as we continue to move forward and as always next week then we'll just continue this process uh, one last thing these blogs are always standalone blogs so if I tend to, if you're somebody who watches our blogs regularly and I seem like I'm repeating myself it's because I want to keep making the point each one of these is meant to be an individual representation of what it is that we're creating, just a snapshot of how much is being accomplished by our team of complete, unpaid, and nonprofit volunteers uh, working to create world change, being the change we want to see in the world, not waiting for somebody else to do it, but taking action and maintaining an open invitation for others to take action too. If you'd like to join us, and get involved with what it is that we're creating, and be a part of this open source and free shared movement to create a truly sustainable planet that works for everyone and everything that lives here, positively impacting the lives of all for the highest good of all. And that's what we're here to do. So without further ado, let me go through the bullet points of what we have accomplished in the last week, and I'll come back around, talk details, and like I said, if you'd like to follow along, see pictures, click on the links, and really explore deeply into this, go to our website, onecommunityglobal.org, and cruise through there. Click on the blog link and you can see this most recent blog as well as all of our previous blogs, our 41 updates prior to this one as well. And you can actually see the progress of everything that we've done. So, and blogs even before the 41 because we've only done 41 videos, but we've been working on this now. I've been working on this full time for three years. So we've got a lot that we have accomplished. Let's talk about the last week. So education update. Um, we are working on the lesson plan, which is our second complete week lesson plan, which is uh, the theme is linear space. We finished time a couple weeks ago, and so now we're working on the next lesson plan, which is linear space as the overarching theme to teach all the other subjects, math, science, English, etc. Uh, we are also working on social sciences images. We're still doing all the image research to create the social science molecule, as we call it, which is a nonlinear representation, uh, which is interesting because we're doing linear space as the lesson plan. This is nonlinear. The nonlinear representation of social sciences as a complete body of knowledge, as well as with complete details uh, for meeting and exceeding national standards for learning social sciences. Also, uh, the Open Source Hub, we thought that was going to be done this last week. It did not get finished. We're still working on it, but it will definitely, I guarantee it will be done this following week. And so we're excited to continue to make progress on that. Uh, and food infrastructure, tons of updates on that. Uh, we get the rainy, retaining walls done in 3D for all of the phase one food, well, for the large scale aquapini, which will then be duplicated over to the other one. So the uh, retaining walls are now done in 3D. We get the pre-engineering starter and testing houses done in 3D, which are seed starter houses, and they're also our testing houses for plastic. After months of research, and I'll talk details about this when I come back around, we realize that the only way that we're going to identify what the absolute best roofing is for the aquapinis and the wallapinis is to build a series of testing houses that will also uh, function as starter houses for us. And so 
Uh, we've got those designed, the basic designs. Images are up on the blog if you want to see what those look like and the basic designs, which still need engineering, but the basics are together now in 3D so you can see what they're going to look like and then we'll update those as we continue to move forward on engineering for the rest of the food infrastructure. Uh, we've added 11 more complete plant details to the food forest planting pay, plants page, which has 300 plants for our food forest. I think that brings us now to 410 complete plants that we've researched from around the world and, uh, and added details to. Um, we are now also calculating all the nursery supply details that are necessary for our food infrastructure. So little things, all the little uh, additional details that are going to be necessary to run a globally transformative food uh, production facility that is going to teach other people how to build self-sufficient, self-sustainable, and super biodiverse and nutritious food that far surpasses what you can get in the grocery store. So we're getting those details in. And uh, in this last week, we also have formed a necessary partnership with the local fish and game department for the freshwater mussels that we'll be growing as part of our aquaculture in the large-scale aquapini and the xenopinis. And that's super exciting because this mussel is actually uh, an endangered item and so, and it's something that we will be able to contribute to repopulating the local streams with through our aquaculture. So very, very exciting to uh, get in contact with the Fish and Game Department, get that nailed down. Uh, Earthbag Village, talking about um, highest good housing. We've got our first furniture layout is done, thanks to Philip Gill. We'll talk details about that in a second. Uh, and, the, and the Straw Bale Village, uh, Dave Wallen now has wrapped up his part of the Straw Bale Village. We've got a new section rough that we'll put up on the blog as well if you want to take a look at a cross section of what that looks like. And he's uh, just putting the final details on the CAD for us for his part and then we're going to be looking for the people that we need to complete the, the really specific details and take that to the next level. And then on the Sago Center, uh, Sago Center now we're beginning CAD update, the CAD update based on all of our 3D work and there's still a whole bunch more 3D work that's being done. So Carl Harris is doing the CAD, CAD update, which is to make the CAD now match everything that we learned from the process of putting the Sago Center into 3D in SketchUp. And we're still continuing with updates on that, but we made some major, major updates to uh, the Dining Dome, and then also just in the last week we've realized that we need to move the second floor down, and so we've started working on those CAD updates, and thanks to the help of Devin Porter, uh, we're doing those floor updates as well, which is a pretty huge overhaul um, a redoing of a lot of work that's already been done, and we're very fortunate to have some great help on that. And last but not least, uh, we announced our partnership with the Evolver Social Network in this last week. So Evolver uh, is a conscious group working towards positive and permanent change uh, from a social perspective uh, globally as well, and so we're excited to partner with them and help to promote what it is that they're creating, and they're going to help us promote what it is that we're creating as two organizations that really carry different pieces of the puzzle uh, that is global transformation and creating this shift, the shift that's already happening, that we're doing with all these activities. So that's our busy, busy week for the last week. Let me go back over that list now in detail and talk about uh, some more specifics on all that stuff. And then I want to wrap up with uh, talking about objectively assessing the value of fulfilled living and what it is we're creating, why it is that we're focusing on fulfilled living, and how fulfilled living can specifically be a pathway to global transformation, how it needs to be, in our opinion, the pathway to global transformation, because it truly is a process of giving people what they want, what people need, what people want most in their life, as a path to global transformation, so that people can enter into this process of creating a better world for everyone, not because they need to, not because they have to, not because they want to do something great for the world, but because it fulfills something within them. Because it provides a better way of living for you, because it provides a better way of living for your family, because it provides a better way of living for your friends. And by a better way of living, I'm talking about more sustainable and de dependable energy, uh, more beautiful homes that will last forever and are cheap and affordable to be able to build. Uh, better, super high, much, much higher quality food that is obviously locally grown and more diverse than anything that you get in the grocery store, uh, as well as a social and a recreational environment that is constantly enriching, constantly evolving, and tailored to the needs of the very people that live there because it's designed and operated by those people. An environment that provides 
financial stability, but also, and more importantly, provides a, an enriching and full and vibrant life of doing more of the things that people love to do, whatever that is for individuals. And so by creating that, because it has such a motivational pull, we talk about if we can make it affordable enough, and this is why we're open sourcing and free sharing everything that we do, and we say that if we can make it easy enough, and that this is why we're doing everything, not just open source, but open source project launch blueprinting it, so that we're creating do-it-yourself plans, specific plans so that people can duplicate everything that we, we produce. The tools, tutorials, and resources, not just there to look at, but to actually duplicate it with multimedia uh, videos and everything of every component that we're doing. This is how we're developing it all. We're building infrastructure. And then the last one, we said if we can make it attractive enough, and the fulfilled living component is that attractive piece. And so I'm going to finish by talking in detail about how we're actually going to objectively quantify, objectively measure the actual value, the dollar value of what it is that we're creating for people. So that, that, so that as we roll this out and as one community becomes a reality, as it builds and as it expands, somebody could take a look at it and compare that to the way that they're living right now and say, well, you know, I'm spending this much on my home and this much on energy and this much on education. And well, what does this provide for me? Why should I even bother to do anything different? What is the actual tangible dollars value of what it is that we're doing? And we've got a really innovative way of actually assessing that. And it is a... A uh, social experiment that has never been done in the history of humanity and couldn't be done, in our opinion, uh, until now because the technology didn't exist. And so I'll share that at the end of this. But first, let's talk about our updates. Uh, education for Life program, open source and free shared education as a path to transforming the world. Creating open source and free shared education program that far exceeds current models of education and is applicable in a home environment, in a community environment, in a traditional educational environment, in an environment where a parent just wants to enrich the educational experience of their kid, not necessarily as a homeschooling environment, but just to make it more fun, as well as a model that could be implemented in urban environments to start up community-based, not like one community, but just a community-based education program which in the end we will teach people how to do licensing and everything that we do through our step-by-step step -step process of setting this up for ourselves, the open source project launch blueprint it so other people can take it all and use it in a way that works best for them. And we already have a ridiculous amount of resources on the website based on our assessment and evaluation of the top alternative education programs out there in the world. Bloom's Taxonomy, Montessori, Waldorf, the ORF system, the RAGIO system, study tech, uh, aid intelligences, all of these systems have been evaluated to identify what is it that makes them special? What is it that makes them unique? What is it that makes them different? And how can we take those pieces and break them into individual components that can be implemented as a complete free shared and open source educational model or as individual components to enrich any educational model? to be an open source and free shared resource set that can be applied in any educational environment in a way that works best for people, for anybody. And so what we've been working on the last week is now we are working on the linear space lesson plan. And so what the linear space lesson plan is, is uh, specifically it's the, a weekly theme, which is linear space, like the distance between things. So 3D, 2D, linear, as well as 4D and what that looks like. And so we're working on a lesson plan that within the context of linear space, how do you teach English? How do you teach science? How do you teach social sciences? How do you teach math? How do you teach all of these things within this theme so it makes it relevant? Relevant because it's hands-on, because it's interesting. Not just learning something in a book, but actually really interesting, vibrant information where it's applicable because you're applying it to the different aspects of the theme within the context of each of the of each of the subjects and so and it's set up so that it can be applied regardless of where somebody is in their educational learning process meaning it's set up so it's not it's not lit well it is linear uh, but it is set up so that it is uh, so that any age so rather than saying oh if you're in kindergarten you need to teach this instead of saying hey 
begin with this, and if that's too easy, try this. And if you want a challenge, try this. And if you're a college kid, this would be challenging even for you at that level. So if you just happen to be a prodigy at age 13, a genius, or at 5, or whatever, then here's how we can challenge that kid within this context and create something really magical. So we can take the brain power that we have available in our children and we can truly, truly stimulate them to a level that is not only super fun and super useful and obviously super educational, but is actually beneficial to humanity that becomes a part of the global collaborative, becomes a part of the global cooperative of information gathering and improving the entire system, evolving the whole thing. And so that is what the linear space lesson plan is all about that we're working on. Well, all the lesson plans are about that format. And linear space is talking about how do you do that in the context of the distance between things, looking at, you know, how does linear space change for you as you grow up? Super fascinating stuff. So also I said that we are making great progress on social sciences. I would say we are, <clears throat> if I didn't already say this, I'd say we're probably 40% done with the images. 40% done. We actually went back, we went through and we were, I mean, we did images for, God, I think we researched, I know we researched over 200 images uh, last week, and now we've gone back and realized, like through collaborating as a group and the per with the person that's doing all that research, the predominant uh, researcher, uh, refined our process to make it more effective. And so um, we found uh, we went back to that process of going through it, and now we've got a lot better images. So I'd say we're about forty percent done with that. And then, last but not least, uh, working on the complete redesign of the education open source hub and what that means. What, the, what it's going to look like when it's done and the work that's in process is icon representations for every component of the educational model. So that when you click on those icons, it'll take you to the page that discusses in depth all of our research on Montessori, for instance, or all of our research on the different values that we have broken down through there, or it clicks to the math molecule or the social science molecule. And putting that together in a super beautiful visual representation that's very easy to reference what it is that you're looking for and then using those icons and propagating them across the entire website, across the entire open source education model so that when you click on an icon and you go to that page, those icons become the representation of where to look for the information that you need so that you don't have to read the entire page, so you don't have to read all the details, you can just quickly scan, find the information that you want and then engage that information and use it in the way that that's most uh, effective for you. And so that whole open source hub being redesigned, the reason why it's taking so long and why it so, takes so much time is because it's not just the front page that accesses all that, and redesigning the menus, all that stuff's happening too. It is also redesigning every single page that already exists in the Education for Life program from the strategies of being to the strategies of teaching, all of it so that it's consistent throughout there and it uses these icons as easy visual representations and all the menus are consistent so you can access every aspect of the program from any page that you want. And so it's a huge, huge undertaking and, um, and it comes along also with, with building out all the pages that aren't done and saying, hey, these are the pages that are done. So when you, go, when you run into a place like, wait, where's the content that I was looking for, like the social sciences, that's not done yet. So if you click on it, but that page needs to be there so we can link to it from every page in the site because it's important. And so when people click on that, they'll say, hey, this page isn't done, but if you want to see what this page is going to look like, go to the math page. If you want to see it, go to onecommunityglobal.org forward slash math, and you'll see what we're creating. And we're doing this for all the subjects. And, so, and then it'll also say, hey, if you're an intelligent person, creative person, a teacher, and you want to help, we're looking for people to participate and help us with that. So, also, um, food infrastructure. We said we got the retaining walls are done in 3D now. And what that means is we're working on a large-scale aquapini first because once that one is completely done, detailed, engineering is done on the roof, everything is done that needs to be done with that, then we'll be ready to uh, take that information and strip it down to create wallapini 3 and then modify and edit, edit it, uh, modify wallapini 3 to create wallapini 1 and 2 and then also modify that to create Xenopini 1 and 2, and then drop it into the model that I shared because we started to do the complete layout, uh, and I could, we could drop that into that complete layout, and then you'll be able to actually walk around in the structures and see what they are, and then we can work on all the different plumbing and things like that. And so all that stuff is coming together, the water catchment and all those details, how that's all going to work, we've got to finish it out to the utmost detail in 3D 
and then just keep updating that as we have more and more people helping and collaborating and, and getting that done. And so the retaining walls, the south retaining walls in 3D is a huge, huge um, accomplishment because it was one of those big pieces. It's just, it's just time consuming to get it right, to make it look the way that it's supposed to, to get those details in. And so now they're done. And you can see that uh, on the blog. So check out the written blog and you can see pictures of that, screenshots of that work that's been done. And now next, now what we're doing is we're starting to put in some of the other details. And so we've got to swap out, uh, right now we just kind of got these gray walls and those got to be swapped out for six by six inch cinder blocks because that's what we'll actually be using. And then we've got to add in the supports underneath the media beds and those kinds of details. And so once we get all that done, then we go, great, is this correct? We update the CAD with the help of David Sweet who's working on all that, correlate all that, update that also with uh, engineering on the roof, and then we can duplicate that over into all the other structures and so and then create the whole thing so you have the complete model. So it's coming along really nicely. And then along with that, one of those pieces that's going to be duplicated is in the other piece that I said we did, which is the food infrastructure pre-engineering um, pre starter and testing houses, which I said are done in 3D. So the pre-engineering aspects of these are done in 3D. There's a couple of details we're still going to add, but the basics are done in 3D, and I've got pictures of those up on the website as well, so you can take a look at, the, um, at those on the blog. Uh, and the point of those houses and what they are is they're a culmination of months of research on plastic. We went and we looked at so many different types of plastic, polycarbonate, dual layer polycarbonate, tri-layer polycarbonate, polyethylene, Solex, those were kind of the top ones that we looked at. And then some of these other really radical different types of materials that we ultimately said wouldn't work because they're too expensive and they don't really fit with the open source model because you can only buy them in one place. So revolutionary materials, but there's kind of a corner on the market and it doesn't, it's just not a do-it-yourself thing. And so <clears throat> after talking to greenhouse providers and materials providers and steel providers and also just plastic providers and uh, talking to a couple of colleges and talking to greenhouse owners, um, well, ultimately what we came down to is, is there's just so much conflicting information. And you don't know when somebody's trying to sell you something versus when somebody's being really upfront with you about the details. And so we realized that we need testing houses to really identify what's necessary. And that's what these are all about. So we drew them up and you can actually see the picture of their initial drawing and how that translate into something more detailed. And then, you know, you see the engineered version will develop over the next few weeks. Uh, hopefully in the next few weeks, not in the next few months, but you'll see that all come up as open source content as well. And, um, and so, and the purpose of those is to test all the different types. And right now, I think we're planning on four different types of testing. So we're going to do a polycarbonate layer with a uh, polyethylene layer, a dual polyethylene layer, a dual, poly, a dual poly polycarbonate layer, like two layers of dual polycarbonate, as well as a Solex uh, covering and see which one works best. And then within that, we'll also be able to test what the solar gain is from adding more stone to the internal insides of these structures. And they're designed as kind of a mini versions of or as similar, very similar to the bigger structures, only much shallower, much more affordable to build. And they're not, they don't need to be permitted because they're really temporary structures. And so um, check them out in 3D. And they say we've added 11 more complete plant details to the plant page. And so what that means is uh, now we're up to, well, we're over 400 plants that we have researched and added to the website. We're over 600 plants that we've researched, but we've got over 400 now up on the website, complete details, including cultural considerations, including planting guidelines, including obviously descriptions and pictures, links to more information as well. And then we're going to develop that out. Once we get on the property, we'll develop this out with additional layers of recipes and all kinds of other things that I've been talking for the last couple of weeks uh, that Guy has been helping us. We've got a new partner in the software department that is helping us design an open source and globally collaborative software that will also organize all this information. So other people will be able to input information into this and then we'll be able to add that to the website. So we'll have kind of two things running simultaneously. This global collaborative uh, software and for people that aren't comfortable with that then we've just got the website where people can click and just send us their suggestions or input their ideas and we'll go through all those and put the best ones up on the website. And so we'll have optimized website pages to help people find the information that they're looking for and easily access it and access it, access it, access it, and that's funny, easily access it in that format 
and then also uh, GitHub, where you'll be able to go there and get all that information and, and con globally cl control, collaborate on it in real time and actually evolve that separate, completely as a separate entity from one community, but we're designing all the software to be able to do that. So 11 more plants are now up on the Food Forest page. You can see that at onecommunityglobal.org forward slash food forest. Check out what's going on with that developing page or go and click on the, uh, the Aquapini planting and harvesting details on the Highest Good Food page and you can see the other 300 that we've uh, identified in specifics there. So now with that I also said that we're now calculating all the nursery supply details that are necessary. So um, we finished the cost analysis for everything that needs to be planted in all the aquapinis and wallapinis. And we've identified the sources for where you're going to buy all that stuff, where anybody can, it's this open source content that people could use right now. Like you could apply this right now. Go check it out. It's hundreds of hours of work. It's immense. It's awesome. And, um, and it's available right now. It's done. So if you want to see where you can buy all these amazing exotic plants, if you can read about you know what the cultural considerations are, get more all that stuff is done. Now we're calculating all the nursery supply details. You know, so what are the other what are the little things that need to be added in here? We're starting to work on that. You know, what what is it that we need to run our complete open source botanical garden model as well, and what's necessary? Accessioning details. You know, what is what are all the just the little things that you need to run a nursery like this and keep it all up and up and operating. And so obviously we're going to open source all that, and that's happening behind the scenes. And then the other thing I said that we did in the food department, and remember our goal here, the whole point of this food is not just to grow amazing food. It's to transform the way people look at food, the way what people are willing to accept, to raise the bar and, and show people the diversity of food that's out here, the apples, the figs that are available, these amazing plants that you would never get in a grocery store because people don't haven't heard about them enough to want them. We want to change that. We want to put these plants in the hands of the people that are interested in amazingly diverse, super nutritious, and um, super healthy food and delicious food. We want to put that food in the hands of people, teach them how to do it self-sufficiently and self-sustainably, and then build a market for it. And if the market wants it, then the grocery stores will adapt and they'll want to buy it from the people that are producing this. And so it's something that really um, can't be done on a large scale. And so it's, it's creating a foundation for new things in farmers' markets, new things at the dinner table. And that's really what we want to do. And so along with that, in this last week, we, um, we also formed a necessary partnership with the local fish and game department, so with the state fish and game department for our state, for the supply of freshwater mussels that we will be growing in the, uh, in the aquapinis. And so these freshwater mussels are an endangered species, and we're excited to be growing them in there because it allows us to produce extra to be able to put back into the waterways to help start restocking those in their natural habitat because they really, really uh, need the help. And so we've formed uh, the necessary relationship and the necessary uh, agreements to be able to do that. And, uh, and that's super, super exciting too. And it's one of those things that we're going to open source share. Like once we get the whole process done, and we've done that. When people start going and building their own versions of the Aquapini, especially in a complete teacher demonstration model like One Community, we're going to teach them, <coughs> excuse me, how to do this. You know, why choose something real basic when you can really, really uh, choose something that might be endangered and grow that as your aquaculture and help give back to your environment to be true stewards of the earth and to not just take but to, to, to provide and to give something back. And so that's uh, a big part of what it is that we're doing. It's part of our open source botanical garden model. It's uh, part of our aquaculture. It's part of the chickens that we've chosen, the rabbits that we've chosen. Every aspect of our food infrastructure is designed to help support and um, promote biodiversity and to expand that and to teach others how to do that too. And so the muscles that we've identified are a big part of that. And um, forming this relationship in the last week is very exciting. Also, I said that we, uh, we've got the Earthbag Village um, the first furniture layout is done thanks to the work of Philip Gill. And what I mean by that is we've still got to put the rocket mass heater in there, but we've got a Murphy bed, and you can see a ton of pictures of this on the, the blog. Check it out. It's super, super cool. And so the first furniture layout that's done is um, a, a Murphy bed that folds up with a loft up above it. And so it's a design for a family 
uh, or just for or just for a couple. There's a queen size bed that folds up. When it folds up, another table folds down to open up the space in there and give you lots of space in that room. And then there's also a staircase that, or sorry, a staircase, a ladder that climbs up to a loft above all this in the earth domes that allows storage, or it could be a second little room since the domes are so tall that it's uh, five and a half feet of standing room up in that second floor uh, thanks to this. And so uh, the design is super, super amazing. Great work by Philip Gill. And now he's about to start working on two more designs. So that design is kind of a family design. He's going to do another design, which would be like shared accommodations with two separate beds. Then he's going to do a third design as well. And that will pretty much finish this out. And we're, we're looking into um, sustainable furniture builders to see how much it would cost to have something like this produced for us, or do we want to build it ourselves? And so that's all part of it as well. Um, also, and so that's the Earthbag Village, the Straw Bale Village. Um, Dave Wallen has wrapped up his part with that one. So with huge gratitude, uh, Dave is is um, is finishing up his piece. We got a new section rough. If you want to see that on the blog, is up there. A new picture of a cutaway, a side view of <clears throat> elevations within the Straw Bale Village. And uh, and now what what Dave is doing is he's just finishing up. The, uh, he's doing a series of drawings for us on like the details that need to go into it. So there's still a ton of heavy lifting that needs to be done. But Dave graciously donated his time and got the whole basic layout into CAD for us. And so now we're looking for that, that architect that would like to build their portfolio with something truly, truly uh, globally influential and transformational and sustainable by working on this with us to take it to the next level. Of course, we're looking for the engineers that would like to do all the engineering calculations that need to be done on these straw bales too. And so all of that is what we're working on right now. And so Philip is just finishing up the last pieces of his and giving us everything necessary for us to go seek that next level of help to work on those models and bring it to, uh, to its ultimate conclusion of complete building plans so that we're ready to construct those. And so we can update all the details of how much it's going to cost and all that kind of stuff too. So very exciting to see that going forward on Straw Bale Village. Uh, and then two other things that I mentioned. Sago Center, uh, we're beginning a CAD update with that. So the Sago Center is a duplicable city hub and recreational center. And the purpose of that building is to teach people how to build an ecotourism resort that will also save thousands, thousands, if not, I would, I would argue, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars on uh, city design because it's laundry for 300 people. It's dining for 300 people. So 150 people at a time dining. So two shifts, you can feed 300 people in this one building. It's a recreational center for, you know, 300 people. And so, and it's got a natural swimming pool and all these other elements that were open source sharing individually. And so what we're doing now with the Sego Center is we're beginning the CAD update which is taking everything that we learned from putting it into 3D, and there's still more 3D work to be done, but all the, the main things that we needed to check out have been completed, and so now we're starting, Carl Harris is starting to do the work of updating the CAD to match the SketchUp, the 3D SketchUp model. And then we're also, thanks to the help of Devin Porter, updating that SketchUp model further, and our team is working on it also, but Devin Porter in this last week has really tackled the process of moving one of the floors that needed to be moved to fix the windows and fixing some other issues that we had in there that were just super, super complex and required some cleanup, some major, major cleanup um, of the original file. And so um, that's what's happened in this last week. And now uh, Carl is starting to move, take everything that we learned from that and starting to update the CAD. And so all that's gonna happen over the next uh, couple weeks. And by the end of the year, we should be ready to take this to our partners at P2S Engineering and start working on the mechanical electrical plumbing details and getting those in there and then continue to update the 3D and so so it goes. And when it's done, we will have complete open source and free shared building plans for all aspects of the Sego Center for every element of that. And then when we actually build the structure, we will teach people all the maintenance details of the laundry, all the maintenance details of the energy infrastructure, all the ongoing process of building it, all the details of how we build all these different pieces. So we'll put complete videos in every aspect that we do it's just going to be an ongoing process of videotaping it and creating tutorials and multimedia presentations, including video, written details, everything that people need to be able to duplicate the Sago Center, as well as the complete building plan. So you can take those and then evolve them in whatever way people want. All the CAD files, all the 3D SketchUp files, thousands of hours of work. We can give that away so that people can use that 
as the platform to build off and talk about giving people what they want, change the world. This is it, you know? Make it easy enough, make it affordable enough, and make it attractive enough. And the Sego Center is mind-blowingly beautiful. And so um, that's what we're doing, is we're designing it open source and free sharing everything that we, we create uh, so that people can get involved. Uh, get involved. And so, um, yeah, so moving forward on that. <clears throat> and then last but not least, I said we announced a partnership with the Evolver, which is super exciting to uh, be partnered with a great, another forward-thinking organization, definitely working on world change and evolving consciousness and, um, and you know, people that want to make a difference. And so we're partnering with them. So that I said that I wanted to wrap up with uh, just talking about giving people what they want and um, so they can change the world. And I said that we had a, a unique way that we're assessing that. <clears throat> and as an, as an organization, we've had a lot of conversations about this because the environment that one community is creating is purposed to be an environment where nobody within the environment needs money. The environment is self-sufficient in that it produces revenue from people visiting, like a bed and breakfast. So imagine if you built a bed and breakfast that was sufficient to meet all of your financial needs. And so you would host people coming and visiting your bed and breakfast. And in doing so, they would pay you a value that, that would be comparable to going to a hotel but the service and the experience that they get is so much greater than that. And, and you would use that money to be able to run your bed and breakfast. Well, one community as a nonprofit global transformation entity is designed the exact same way. And so when you look at the revenue projections on what it is that we're creating, you know, at once one community, once the seven village models are complete, it'll be a multi-million dollar revenue producing organization where nobody within the organization needs money like there's no the food bills and the housing bills and electricity all those things are included but there's also a social architecture that's built into the model that provides more free time to actually experience the things that you want to experience but more specifically it provides more opportunity and diversity than even the most uh even the largest metropolitan areas and primarily because it'll all be within walking distance. So literally thousands of hours of recreational activities that are built into the very infrastructure, built into the very architecture of the entire village designed around this idea of providing a more fulfilled living experience. And that's why we have an open source and free shared education model. So that people that want that within the community can experience that. So visitors can have their kids experience something like that as well. So that we can share something that other people can implement. Every element of one community is designed to be implemented either as an individual component or as a complete teacher demonstration community, village, or city to be built anywhere in the world. And so the idea of the fulfilled living model is foundational to it because it's meant to demonstrate giving people what they want, what most people want money for. See, I have a belief that people don't want money. People don't want paper. People want the things that money buys. And so 15 years ago, I started planning this process that we're now coming to the point where we're actually going to start building it. And the idea was, how do we create an environment that provides what people really want? And that doesn't need money. That will provide so much of what people really want that people will pay to come and visit it. And then we will give them everything that they need so that if they have an amazing experience and if they are blown away by the lifestyle that they see people living and by visiting such a place, that if they're blown away by that, that they can take everything they need to go and duplicate it somewhere else. And not just duplicate it, but duplicate it in such a way that they add their information and their experience to the global cooperative and the global collaborative so that it becomes even better, helping more people to duplicate it. And if they duplicate it as a teacher demonstration hub like one community, we are there to hold their hand through every step of the process, to put that information into the Global Collaborative, to evolve the open source and free shared blueprints, tools, tutorials, and resources, and to help them teach other people also to duplicate the environment. <clears throat> so the fulfilled living model, the way that we want it, we're objectively assessing this, is we have created an application called the ACE app. And if you Google ACE app, A-C-E, application in one community, you can find out what that is or go to our website and go under Highest Good Society. 
the Highest Good Society page, and you can see this ASAP. We're using this right now for tracking our time. As an organization, we log in and we log our time just like anybody else would at a job because we want to keep track of how much time we're putting into all the different components and what everybody's doing. And it's designed so that people can see what everybody else is working on. And it's a really convenient way for us to access the Google Docs and all the different things. We're working with people from all over the world how to access that information really easily that one team member is working on or so everybody on the team can see exactly what I've been doing this week, etc. But it's also designed so that when we get on the property, we can log, we can actually keep track for those that want to participate in the, in the true social experiment, the gathering of data, the objective um, identification of exactly what the value of fulfilled living is. For people that want to participate, we'll be able to monitor and gather the data necessary to objectively identify what that is. For instance, if you're taking seven yoga classes a week, because that's something that you really love to do, and those classes are free, they still have a monetary value in traditional society. The education program, a free shared open source and free shared education program that will be a foundational part of one community, has a private schooling value to it and will even be offering it as private schooling for some people that are outside of one community. At least that's the plan right now, to be able to come and bring their kids as a full-time student in this environment. There's a value to that. There's a value to the time that's that's invested in these things. There's a value to being able to take, you know, to, to listen to live music every night if you want to, to be able to take a painting class, to be able to take a carpentry class, to be able to learn these new skills, to be able to have, you know, tutoring for your children above and beyond the educational model, or to be able to have tutoring for yourself. These kinds of things. I mentioned yoga, or tai chi, or qigong. All of these things will predictably be a part of one community because it only takes one person that's interested in doing that and a small percentage of one community of the community and its visitors that want to participate in that to launch a new class and it's built into the very infrastructure of the model. It's part of the community contribution. You can read all about this on the website on the Highest Good Society page onecommunityglobal.org forward slash Highest Good Society and it talks about this whole model of creating fulfilled living. But we want to objectively identify what the value of it is and show people exactly how much, what, what is the value of fulfilled living as defined by us and everybody, people do it differently. But this ASAP will allow us to objectively measure that and then we could actually calculate out, well, if you add up the fact that you're eating all organic food, you add up the fact that you no longer have a commute, you know, everything that you need is within walking distance, all of your recreational activities, your educational model, if you add up the value of that, so all your recreational activities, the live music, the different classes, the health classes, things like that, all the personal enrichment, learning classes, all that stuff, all the time that you save no longer having to commute, all the time that you save no longer having to take your kids to these classes or drive yourself to these classes, having to travel all this distance, do all these things, all of these things self-contain, what is the value of that? And then you could add on to that, well, okay, this is my living environment, so I've got my home, I've got free energy because it's all sustainable, you know, and I talked about the food already, and then I've got this for-profit business entity and non-profit business entity and this entrepreneurial model that's built into it for, the, for one community, the non-profit actually sponsoring businesses and helping people to launch businesses as well. All of those details, all of that stuff, what is the value of that? What is the value of each individual component? How much is the value of that from a community standpoint? <coughs> Excuse me. How much of it? How much is the value of that on an individual standpoint? What's it worth? And different people will value different things differently, but there's a, an objective monetary value that can be attached to all this stuff. And so we see this as one community will be a unique environment for assessing that, assessing it, assessing how people respond to it, assessing how people spend their time. Like, how do people really choose to spend their time when you have a virtual smorgasbord of activities at your fingertips, literally within walking distance? Money is no longer a limiting factor. Time is no longer a limiting factor. <clears throat> Availability is no longer, and diversity is no longer a limiting factor. All of these things are available to you right there, right in one environment. How do people choose to spend their time? How does that environment itself evolve over time? What does it turn into? Where do people end up spending their time? What are the classes that end up being offered? So all that <clears throat> is what we're building to. And this is why we talk about giving people what they want, 
as a pathway to totally and completely transform, positively and permanently transforming the world for everyone. Because the entire environment gives more than it takes. The entire environment teaches other people how to give more than they take. The whole thing is supporting this open source movement of free sharing, ways to improve life for individuals, ways to improve life for communities, cities, states, countries, globally. Growing the model as it spreads throughout the world and teaching other people how to build more and more. A self-replicating model for self-sufficiency and self-sustainability in the form of teacher demonstration, communities, villages, cities, all teaching others how to build, build additional teacher demonstration, communities, villages, and cities too. That's what we're doing. So, if this is exciting and you'd like to get involved, our arms are open wide. The doors are wide open. We're always looking for people who want to participate. I always like to end on the same note, which is if what we're doing is exciting to you, um, first off, uh, the number one thing that people could do right now is One Community is still seeking large-scale funding. If you go to onecommunityglobal.org forward slash funding, you can see what it is that we're looking for. That will take our whole project to a whole new level and allow us to produce 100 times what we are producing right now. And ultimately that will grow to a thousand times, 10,000 times what it is that we're producing right now. But we're getting it done regardless. You know, the open source content, as you can see with these weekly reports, we're accomplishing a ton. But the biggest thing that we could use right now is that one person, that one person, that one group that would like to fund global transformation like what we're talking about, to create the first of these self-replicating teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities that are gonna be built around the world to help us get the funding that we need to take the property that we've been working with for the last three years with the county, developing all these details to get that property off the market and then either as a donation to our 501c3 nonprofit or uh, as an investment and then we would pay that back through an amazing crowdfunding campaign that we already have designed but we have to have the property off the market to do that. The other way to help is to get involved and there's lots of ways to get involved. So I always say, you know, number one, join us as you join us as a partner, as a consultant somebody that's just donating their time, helping us complete this. We just did another push. We're doing a real push right now for more 3D people as well as engineers. We could really use additional help there, but uh, there's lots of areas. The education program, uh, we, could, we could use 10 more people working on the education program right now if you want to donate your time. So getting involved that way is one great way to help us out, and we've got great ways to promote those who are helping us to help support other people in the traditional paradigm that need to make money and those kinds of things. Obviously, we support that as well. Uh, also, Get involved as a pioneer. If you're somebody that would like to be a part of the actual building team, the full-time team that's working on this kind of stuff, and would like to move to the property, take a look at our invitation process for that. It's extensive and um, it's pretty intense, but for those people that are ready and really want to be a part of global transformation and move to the property and build everything that we're talking about and be a part of the formation process that's happening right now, just get involved as a pioneer. <clears throat> and then lastly, uh, Consider just participating on the internet. Share our stuff. Like our stuff. Liking our stuff on Facebook, sharing our stuff on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, those kinds of things, joining our Tumblr, that kind of stuff is way more beneficial than most people realize. Check it out. There's ways for everybody to participate. You go to our website, and you click on Get Involved. You can see all the different ways are right there on the website. And we invite you to join us in creating what it is that we're creating to become a part of it or take everything that we're doing and move it in a different direction. Everything we do is open source. So there's tons of resources that are done that are ready to be used right now that are the product of hundreds if not thousands of hours of work and um, you know it's there for people to use. And so please use it, duplicate it, share it, get the word out. Let's continue this movement moving forward as quickly as possible. And um, with that I will wrap up with our Global Transformation Update number 42. And I will say thank you for your support and following our progress as always. And until next time, until next week, uh, thanks for following us.